I packed my bags and I left. And everybody said, Bunt, oh, run away from Sibu, yeah? I'm a no fight and run, so live to fight another day. What? This is The Missing Persons Reports, brought to you by Jamaica Chronicles. An Ananda alert has been activated for 13-year-old Chevenise Coburn of Sunrise Crescent in Kingston 19, who has been missing since Saturday, August 12. She is of brown complexion and medium build. Reports from the Constant Spring Police are that Chevenace was last seen on Red Hills Road in the parish, wearing a white merino, plaid joggers, and a pair of black and white slippers, and has not been heard from since. Anyone knowing the whereabouts of Chevenace Coburn is being asked to contact the Constant Spring Police at 876-924-1421, the Police 119 emergency number, or the nearest police station. The Jamaica Constabulary Force has reported that Enid Roach, an elderly lady, was found wandering in the Grants Penn Police area in St. Andrew, but she is unable to say where she is from. Anyone with information that can assist in reuniting Miss Enid Roach with her family is asked to contact the Grants Penn Police Station at 876-755-1597. Increased operational activities on the western part of the island resulted in a police search for firearms and gunmen. This operation led to the discovery of two Glock pistols, along with magazines holding multiple rounds of ammunition. The collaborative effort between the police and the military took place on Monday along Jimmy Cliff Boulevard in St. James. As the operation continues, two women and one man have been apprehended. A 19-year-old Jamaican convicted in the U.S. of carrying a loaded handgun was recently arrested by deportation officers in Maryland. He is to appear before an immigration judge. The officers from the Enforcement and Removal Operations, Baltimore's Criminal Apprehension Program, took the young man into custody at his residence in Hyattsville on August 2 and served him with papers ordering him to appear before the immigration judge. This Jamaican non-citizen blatantly ignored Maryland's gun laws by carrying a loaded handgun in public, said ERO, Baltimore Acting Field Office Director Darius Reeves. Had we not apprehended him, he could have easily wreaked havoc on the residents of Maryland. ERO Baltimore will continue to exhaust our resources to provide safe communities for the people of Maryland, Reeves added. The Jamaican legally entered the U.S. in May 2011 at Miami International Airport in Miami, Florida. Officers from the Prince George's Police Department arrested and charged him with possessing a loaded firearm on February 28. On June 29, the Circuit Court for Prince George's County in Upper Marlboro convicted the Jamaican of possessing a loaded handgun and sentenced him to 23 months of incarceration, followed by three years of supervised probation. Police in Manchester are probing the death of a man who residents suspect drowned in a section of a river in Alligator Pond over the weekend. The man, who has been identified as Wayne Watson, 34, spoke with the local media last week following a suspected case of drowning in Alligator Pond. Residents told the local media that Watson was last seen on Friday afternoon leaving a construction site to swim in a section of the community known as Baki Dare in Compound. His family raised an alarm after he didn't return home, and a search was then conducted of the area, where his body was found in the river's mangrove on Sunday afternoon. Watson, a fisherman for 17 years in the community, explained last week that the Alligator Pond Beach downstream from where he was found has a sea and a river. He said locals warned visitors to use the river for recreation like swimming, but not to venture into the sea. He said the water can be deep at times, and when you talk to the people, they still are not listening. Don't follow others like we locals, because we can swim. A corporate area man reportedly made off with more than $245,000 worth of goods, including 10 pairs of women's underwear belonging to a Chinese wholesaler before he was apprehended and charged by the police last Saturday. 
The accused Eusebio Cecilio appeared before the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court on Monday to answer to one count of simple larceny. He has not yet entered a plea as he is not represented. It was shared that on August 12, the complainant was making deliveries to a Chinese wholesaler located in downtown Kingston when the vehicle was forced open and the items stolen. Cecilio was later found to be in possession of the items. The items from the alleged theft include 10 panties, 60 packs of socks, 36 boxes of sheet sets, 12 packs of lotion and perfume, 77 packs of lotion and body mist, 29 wallets, 11 purses, 9 handbags, 59 pairs of black jeans pants, and 41 blouses. The matter was, however, adjourned until August 22 by senior parish judge Paula Blake Powell to facilitate the attendance of the investigator and for the accused man to retain a lawyer. As the heartless thugs in the country continues the bloodletting, a 46-year-old woman was shot dead in a brazen daylight attack on Noreen Lane in Bodles Old Harbor, St. Catherine, on Monday afternoon. The victim has been identified as Nadette Almarie Thomas, a resident of the community. It is reported that around 2.35 p.m., residents heard loud explosions and summoned the authorities. Upon arriving, police saw Thomas' body lying on its left side with gunshot wounds to the head and upper body. Thomas was taken to the Spanish Town Hospital, where she was pronounced dead. The body was later removed to the morgue pending a post-mortem examination. Police say they have not yet established a motive for the killing, nor have they identified any suspects. The Old Harbor Police are investigating. I packed my bags and I left. And everybody said, Bound to run with from Sebo, yeah? I'm a no fight and run, so live to fight another day. That's why I'm here today, still fighting for the peace initiative. Where is what but and his friends today? I don't know, and I don't care. So I'm saying, the young people them in a, this community, we are mash it up. We not accepting it. See, you is the golden part of the music. Me, there are thunder pathway. See, Miss Christie's son, Rexton Garden, pass with every day. How we say we are gonna try and do what he might do. Crack skull is here. That man named Crack Skull don't take his name literally. Him only Crack Skull musically. Yeah, As Tero too, we go sing pan and create and develop with talent. Yeah. Shabba Rankin burst down the sun. We say, lad, every night me and I say, Mama Christy. Me I say him one ball up, me salve. Declaring that the police force has his full support, Bounty Killer has ordered marauding gunmen in his native Seaview Gardens community to leave and called for residents to push them out as they are traitors to the area, which has birthed some of Jamaica's most iconic dancehall stars. On Sunday, the warlord shared a video clip of himself rebuking criminals at a peacekeeping event which was staged by the St. Andrew South Police Division's Community Safety and Security Branch last week, Thursday, this after a man was murdered in a section of the community. In a motivational speech that lasted several minutes, Bounty told residents of Seaview that life was not without its challenges, and while struggle must be expected, there was no excuse for criminal behavior, adding that he had lived through the era of some of Jamaica's most notorious gunmen. According to the Anytime Artist, even though he has lived outside Seaview since he became a superstar, he was still connected and wanted the best for his childhood community, According to the 2003 Best Reggae Album, Grammy nominee, Seaview has gained a reputation for being a cradle of too many musical greats, for a few undesirables to disrupt the community. Bounty then went on to commend the police for their non-combative approach. In an interview with The Star, operations officer of the St. Andrew South Police Division, Superintendent Damian Manderson, commended Bounty for his stance on criminality and for, without hesitation, accepting the police's request to participate in the Peace Restoration Initiative. Seaview is a party place, as they would call it, and the area has a rich history of dance hall artists. So once we decide that we are going inside Seaview, I reached out to Bounty Killer and asked if he was willing to partner with us. And he said, of course, and he came and did his thing, the superintendent explained. 
Superintendent Manderson also told the Star that Seaview has been plagued by violence and criminal activities for months and that this had even prevented some residents from attending the peace meeting. He also said that Seaview Gardens is being affected by a gang-like level of violence with murders, shootings, and reprisals, some spanning over months. Nevertheless, he said that many of the violent criminals do not live in Jamaica but continue to influence the youth negatively.